For our agenda today, we'll start by designing our space using interior walls as well as exterior walls. I'll then focus on designing a custom vanity. We'll modify our ceiling within our bathroom. Then I'll create a custom glass shower, bath platform, and water closet. And I'll conclude today with some lighting techniques, a materials list, and a plan set. So let's jump into the program and get started. We'll be designing in Chief Architect Premiere, though most of the tools I use today will also be applicable in Chief Architect Interiors. So at the top of our screen, you can see that we have our standard tools that appear. This toolbar is customizable, and you can access the majority of these tools through our build dialog as well. And it'll bring up our sub dialogs over here. We also have display options that appear over on the right side of our screen. And we have our edit tools that will display down here at the left, and you'll see that as we continue on with our project. So I want to point out that I do have my kitchen and bath layer set display. This is what we'll be using today for our bathroom. We also have our NKBA annotation set selected. Annotations are saved sets defaults that are only available within Chief Architect Premiere. We have our wall options over here, and I'm going to click on my straight wall tool and this will drop down my child options. And you can see we have exterior walls, interior walls, foundation walls. We'll use many of these walls throughout our design. We also have curved wall options that you can incorporate into your project as well. So with my exterior wall selected, I'm just gonna click within my plan and drag out this wall. I can get it pretty close to accurate, but it doesn't have to be completely precise as I can come back and dimension out the space using my dimension tools. So I'll just align that wall and then I'm going to grab an interior wall since this uses both exterior and interior walls for our space. Once our walls are connected you can see that we have a square footage that will appear below our bath and we can take a camera view to see what's going on on the inside. So let's grab our camera tools and we have different options that will appear over on the left. We're going to select a perspective overview and this will allow us to see inside the plan. So I am using a mouse with a scroll wheel and I can just scroll in here if we want to get a little bit more detail of what's going on. We have a wood floor finish that has been applied, a base molding, interior walls that have a nice gray paint finish and then if I click on my mouse I can rotate around here and you can see we have our interior wall that appears and if I rotate just a bit further you can see we have siding for my exterior walls. So in the program we can work in multiple views and I'm going to do that now by bringing down my floor plan view. So I just clicked on it and I'm dragging it down into place and I'm zooming in over here in my plan view. And I can go back over here and I can zoom out just a bit and rotate around so we can see what's going on as we can continue to design. So when I select my plan view, I'll tap my space bar and then double click within the room. This is going to bring up my room specification dialog. Right now, my room type is unspecified. I'm going to make this a bathroom by just clicking on the drop down and selecting bath. Right now you can see that we have a room name and bath will appear. You can override this if you wanted to set it to something different. I have it selected to show our room label. So let's click OK and we can see that change over here in our plan view. I want to dimension out the space so I'm going to use my automatic dimensions tools now and we'll go up to our toolbar, click on that automatic dimension and I'll select my NKBA dimensions and you can see those will appear parallel to the wall. So to modify the wall, I need to select the wall and then the dimension. And we have options that will appear over on the right as far as where we want to move that wall. So we can move the top end, both ends, or move the bottom end. I'll keep the first option selected. And then I'm going to just type in my dimension here. So it'll be 151 and 3 eighths. And the software thinks in inches, so I don't even have to put that inch marker. I can just hit enter on my keyboard and it will adjust. And I'll select the next dimension, set it, click enter, and I'm just going to continue on around my plan until I get this completely dimensioned out. And now that has been dimensioned. I want to add a few more interior walls, so I'll go back to my wall options and I'm going to select my interior wall and then I'll click within my plan 
drag out this wall and we're just going to add in a few more walls here and this is for some closet space that we'll use. And we can look over here, zoom out just a bit so we can see what happens when we get in here in dimension. So we used our automatic dimension tools. I want to show you that we can also use manual dimensions. So I'll click on my dimensioning tools and then we have our options that appear down below. So the first one I want to use is just my end-to-end -end dimension. So I'll click on my end-to-end -end dimension and I'll click within my plan and drag out an end-to-end -end dimension. I'll also go through here and use a point-to-point -point dimension and I'm just going to click within my rooms and drag out that dimension. That's going to dimension the whole space. So I actually want to go and use my interior dimensions. So I'll show you that my interior dimension will grab each of those interiors and those walls now I can set at the dimensions I need them to be. So the thing I'm going to do here is click on the wall and then on the dimension I want to modify. So I'll set this at 70 inches and I'll do the same here and set that over at 70 inches. The last wall we need to dimension is our interior wall and I'm going to set this at 55 and 3 eighths of an inch. And now that has been adjusted. So with our walls in place, I'm going to remove the dimensions that we have on our plan. So to do this, we'll just go up to Edit and down to Delete Objects. And we can delete from a single room, from all rooms on the floor, or all floors. And I'm going to set my manual dimensions and automatic dimensions to be deleted. We'll click Delete, and now that'll update. So while we're in this view, I also want to place in some doors. So we're going to go up to our door tools. I'm going to start by adding in a hinge door. So our first option is already selected and I can just click within my plan here and place my hinge door. The next thing I'll do is place a doorway. That's our next tool below and I can just click within my plan and this time we're going to open up the dialog so we can make some changes. So I'll double click on that doorway from here you can see we have the option to change the door style or type. We can also modify the width here, so I'll set this at 48. I'll keep the height set at 80 inches and the thickness at 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. We'll click OK and we can see that this has been adjusted. I do want to make sure that my doorway is centered, so what we can do is now go down to that edit toolbar and we have a center object tool, so I'll just click on that center object and center it within that plan. And then I'll grab that doorway again and I'm going to place a door over here and a door over here for my his and her closet. We can see what's going on by just quickly, quickly rotating around here. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to exit out of my camera view, take a different camera view. So we'll go up to our camera options and I'm just going to take a full camera so we're just going to click and drag it out into place. I'm going to click Shift F6 on my keyboard. This will tile both of my views. And I want to show you a feature that has also been introduced within Chief Architect X9. And that's our 360 panoramic images. So I've created an image of our finished bathroom today. And we're going to use this as a guide. So I'm going to rotate around here and show you this is our vanity space. And this is the next thing that we're going to create. So I'll bring this up so we can see the next steps as we kind of continue along our project. So let's get back into the program. I'm going to grab my cabinet tools. So our cabinet tools are also located on our standard toolbar. So we have our base cabinet options, wall cabinet, full height, soffit. Uh, we also have shelves, partitions, custom cabinet or custom countertops and backsplash tools. We will use a lot of these tools just within our bath today. So let's place a base cabinet and you can see when I get close to my corner over here we get the indicator that it's going to make it a corner cabinet and for our vanity we don't need a corner cabinet so I'm just going to pull this along the wall a little further and click to add it into our plan. This is a standard base cabinet that you would see within Chief Architect and we can easily modify it. So I'll tap my space bar, double click on the cabinet to open it up and this will bring up our base cabinet specification dialog. Right now this, the height of this cabinet is set at 36, the width at 24, 
but I'm going to adjust this to 60 and the depth here is set at 24 inches. You can also see that we have a countertop that has been placed on our cabinet. We'll keep the dimensions set as they are now and we have a backsplash as well as a toe kick and I want to point out the toe kick height here is set at four inches and I'm going to keep that set that at that dimension as we're going to add some feet later on and that dimension will pull for the feet so I want to keep that at four inches. If we drop down into our box construction option you can see we're using frameless cabinets but you can also modify your cabinets to be framed we have the option to set our doors and drawers as a traditional overlay or use a full overlay like we have selected now. And you can also specify the corner treatment that you would like for your cabinets. Right now we don't have any selected. We'll keep that set as it is. Here's where you can modify the face items of your cabinets. So I'm going to select my doors that I have here and I want to show you how we can easily split objects. So I'm going to split this and then I can select this and split it again and I'm going to make some adjustments here. So I want to set the width to 14 and 1 6 like it's set now so I don't actually don't need to change that but I am going to change the door to a drawer and when I do this I'm going to split it again and then we'll select this here and split this drawer one more time. I can go up to my layout and then I can equalize these and now that's been adjusted. I'm going to set the width here on this item to 28 and 7 8 and then I'll click tab. We can see that adjust and we'll keep this set at a double door and then I'll also go over here to my door and set it as a drawer. I'm going to split it and split it again and then I need to go up to the layout and we'll equalize it. Now I want to get up into this door and make some modifications. So we'll also split it and split it again. And then we need to get in here and set the dimension on the width to 28 and 7 eighths and click tab. And now that has been adjusted. So with just a couple clicks within our dialog here, we were able to modify our vanity. Let's drop down into the door and drawer tab. So I want to change the style of my handle that I'm using on my drawers. So I'm going to change this to a horizontal pull and now those will all adjust. Let's jump down into our accessories tab and I can show you here is where you can add in or change your pilasters. We can also specify different feet. And this is the first time we're going to get into our library. And I want to show you our library options within Chief Architect. So when you purchase a license, you'll automatically get core content that you can download into the program. These are thousands of library items that can be used within your plans. We do have a lot of different bonus catalog content that you can choose from. We also have manufacturer catalogs. So if you do work with any specific cabinet line, this will be a good area to look. We also have a user catalog and this is where I can set and add in library items that I'm going to use within my plan so I can quickly access them. But for our feet, we're just going to get back into our core catalog down into our architectural folder and we're going to jump into millwork and we need to get into our cabinet feet and I'm just going to select a flare leg. That looks great. I'll click OK and now we have a flare leg that's been placed on our vanity. Here's where you can change uh, moldings. We can get in and change materials. I do want to change the material of the countertop. So another new feature available with Chief Architect X9 is that we can change multiple items at one time. So I want to get in here and change both the backsplash, I'll hold down control, as well as the countertop. I'll click on select material and this will bring up my library material options. I'm going to get into my user catalog and down into bath and I've created a sub catalog of materials. So I'm going to select this white Carrera, click OK and click OK and now we can see that our vanity has been adjusted. So we can easily move this within our plan view or our camera view over here but what I'm going to do is tap my spacebar and I'm just going to pull this into place 
So I'll hold down control and now I can accurately move that vanity exactly where I want it to be. I want to take a different view now. We're going to go up to our orthographic view tools. I'm going to take a wall elevation. So I'll just click and drag it out within my plan. And here's where we can work in an elevation view. Let's click right here to enhance the view. I want to add in different objects to accessorize our vanity space. So another way we can get into our library is going up to our standard toolbar and clicking on our library options and I'll open up my user catalog and get into my bath catalog and here's where I've grouped together some other items that I want to use for my vanity. The first thing I'm going to do is add in a mirror. So let's go and find my beveled mirror and I'll just click here within my plan to place that mirror. To make sure it's centered, I can select the mirror and use my center object tool. And we'll just center this over that vanity. I also want to place a vessel sink. So I'll grab that sink, add it to my cabinet. And we also want to make sure that this is centered. So we'll click here to center it. And now it's been centered. And when we look over here, we can see that our mirror is too close to our vanity so we just click and pull it up into place. And we're going to also add a few flowers to our vanity. So I'll just click here and I'll place my flowers on my cabinet. And then I can just copy this flower. So I'll just select it, hit copy, and I can reflect it on the other side of our vanity. And that looks great. Let's drop down our floor plan and I'll add in a hand towel. So we'll zoom in here and I'll grab my hand towel. And I'm going to place my hand towel within the plan. And the reason I dropped down this other view is I wanted to show you sometimes it's great to work in a couple different views. So I'll select that hand towel and we're just going to rotate it within the plan, pull it back. We'll also want to use this 3D camera view and pull this down into place. Something else I notice while I'm in this view is that I can't see a reflection from my mirror. This is very easy to change in the program by going up to 3D, down to camera view options, and we want to toggle on our reflections. And now we can see that we have a reflection from that mirror. Let's get back into our elevation camera. We can zoom in here, and the next thing I want to change, we can actually just exit out of this library browser, is I want to replicate what we've created with the vanity on the other side of the wall. So we can even double click on this elevation again. I can zoom in just a bit. And I'm going to select these components and copy them onto the other wall. So I'm just going to tap on the items that I want to select. And I'm going to click copy. And we'll reflect this on the other side of our door. So we just need to click in the center there. And now we have everything copied onto the other side of that wall. So one other thing I want to note is that you can also block these items together. So I can click here down at my edit toolbar to make these an architectural block and we can add it to our library. So now we can use it again in the future. So I can just rename this vanity. So I want to bring this up into my catalog here and now I have it to use again in the future. Okay, so let's get back into our floor plan. I'll zoom out here and while I have this elevation camera, I'm going to select it and I want to save the camera because we'll use this again. So down in that edit toolbar, we'll click to save the camera and we'll be able to access it. So I can close out of the elevation for now and we can double click on it again if we need it in the future. So we'll also close out of our library browser. Let's bring up that panoramic image again so we can see where we're going next. So now that we've created these vanities, we're going to keep rotating around our space here. You can go up and down and take a look. Next thing I want to do is point up to the ceiling and you can see we have some beams that are placed. So let's get back into our plan. And I'm going to click to close out of this camera view and we'll just take another full camera view. So I'll just click in my plan and drag it out. This will give us a different view of our space. So here's that flat ceiling and I want to modify it. So we're going to click Shift F6 so we can work in this plan view as well. And the next thing we need to do is build a roof plane. 
so that we can modify that ceiling. So we'll go up to our build tools and we'll go down to roof and we're going to select a roof plane and I'll just click within my plan and drag out this roof plane. And it's showing me that my roof planes are not displayed and we do want to turn those on so we're going to click yes and I need to pull this into place a little bit better there. With our roof plane selected, I'm going to click Control E on my keyboard. This will bring up my room plane specification dialog. Right now my pitch is set at 8 and I'm going to change the pitch on my roof to 2. And I'll click OK. And now we need to get into the room. And I'm going to open it up so I'm just going to click within my room. I'll drop down into my structure. and I'll click to remove the ceiling over the room. Click OK and now we can see that we have a nice slope there. So I no longer need to show this roof plane. I want to show you a tool we have within Chief Architect to quickly hide the display. So I can click on this object and if I go down to my object layer properties tool, I can see that I have my roof planes that I'm using and they're displayed within the program. So I'm going to click here just to hide those so we don't need to see those right now. And then I can also select my bath label and this will help clean up the plan too by just clicking on that object display and we'll remove that from that view and that helps to clean it up. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is grab our soffit tool so we need to go to our cabinet options and we'll select a soffit and I'm just going to click within my plan and place this soffit. I'm going to open it up so control E will open up that dialog and we can change the height, the width, the depth, you can modify that beam all within this dialog. So I will set the width on this to 8 and we'll set the height here to 8 as well and we'll click OK and see how that's adjusted in the plan. And then I'm just going to drag out this into place and I can pull it over and I want to show you right now our beam is completely flat so we need to open it back up and we're going to slope our soffit and place it under the roof. Click OK and now we have that beam that goes right under that roof. So I also want to make some copies of this beam. This will help save time. So we have an option to use our multiple copy tool. I can evenly distribute copies. So I'm going to set five copies and I'll click OK and by doing this I can just click and drag out these beams within my plan here. It made just copies of that exact beam so you can see we do need to extend these other beams out by just selecting them and pulling them into place. Let's get into our library browser so we can finish designing out our ceiling and customizing it. So we'll get into our library browser up here. I do have some materials that I've added for my ceiling and the first one is going to be that tongue and groove. So I'm just going to click on tongue and groove and then click here in my 3D camera view and we can see that we've applied it. I can also take materials from my existing plan and use them. So we'll go up and grab this eyedropper and I'm just going to use my base molding material and I'm going to apply it to my soffit. And I want to highlight we do have different options for pasting materials. So in our lower left corner here, you can see right now I have component mode selected. So if I was to paste this material using component mode, it's just going to select and paste this one beam. This would also work for our vanity, for example. If I pasted using component mode and I had just the drawer selected, it's just going to paint that drawer. But if I used object mode, it would paint the entire vanity. We also have a room mode option and this is a good option to place for pasting all of those beams. Then floor or plan mode. And floor mode might be if we had a kitchen and bath that we wanted to update the materials on to keep those consistent. Plan is maybe if we had multiple floors within a plan and we wanted maybe all cabinets to be adjusted, that would be a good option to use that. Okay, so for that ceiling design, we've completed it and now it's time to move on to our shower that I want to create. So to do this, I want to get back and I want to turn off the display of my soffit so I have that selected. I'm just going to go down to that object layer and we'll turn off the display there and that cleans up the plan again. So let's get into our wall tools 
we're going to grab a half wall. So I'll just click and we'll click here in our plan and drag it out. And I'm going to use my temporary dimensions this time to just pull the shower into place. We'll pull that other wall into place as well. Right now we'll click out of our library browser. I like to clean up views as much as I can when I'm designing in a particular space. So let's select these walls. And I'm going to hold down control so I can grab both of them and we'll click control E on the keyboard and this is going to open up our railing specification dialog and the reason it's bringing this up is because we're using a half wall. So we got to make some changes to modify these walls so they look more like a shower. So if we drop down to wall types, right now we're using an interior four, but I'm going to change this to a glass wall. So we can change this to a glass shower and this will update. And we also want to get into my newels and balusters tab and I'm going to set the height here to 96 inches. We'll click tab and you can see over in our preview this will adjust. I'm also going to drop down into my materials tab and I'm going to change several of the materials here. Anything that isn't glass on this wall I'm going to update. So I'm going to hold down control so we can select multiple items, go into our select material dialog. You can use my plan material now. So we'll scroll through here and grab my glass and we can move a little quicker if we just pull it down and we'll go into and we'll go into our glass tempered. We'll click OK and now that will adjust. So let's click OK so we can see the changes that have been made. And now that's starting to look a little bit more like a shower. So we can also rotate around our plan here and pull this into place. We also have a base molding that's still within the shower and alongside the shower. We need to adjust this as we typically wouldn't find that in our shower. So I'm just going to click within the room, go down to my moldings tab and I'm going to deselect to use the floor default and I'll click delete and click OK and now we can see it's been removed from the inside of the shower. And when I adjusted my shower walls, it bumped it in because the shower walls are thinner than that railing wall. So I just bumped that back out. And now I need to click within my room and we're going to make this room a molding polyline. So I'm going to click down here in that edit toolbar. We'll click OK to accept those defaults. And it's telling me that that layer is not turned on. So we're going to click yes. And now that we, now we can see it within the plan. So we also need to remove the molding from the edge. So I'm going to select that tool and that will remove it from this side of the shower. But we also want to remove it from the other side. So we'll click again and now that's adjusted. So we now need a way to enter our shower. So we'll go up to our door tools. And this time I'm going to place a doorway within my shower. And then I'll double click to open it up. And I'm going to change the door type to a hinge door now. And I had to do that to sort of trick the system. Since we placed a half wall, I needed to adjust it. And now that will work within the plan. We do have other options within the software. So we can show our door as a double door. We can show it as a single door only using the door units. You can also show your door as closed or open. We'll show it as open and I want it to swing in both directions since this is a shower door. So we'll click there to accept that change. Here's where you can adjust casings, the lintel, lights. You have a lot of other control here within that door. We'll click just down to the hardware and I want to change my hardware on the door. So we'll change it to a pull handle on both sides and let's click OK to accept those changes. And there's a few things we need to modify here. So we have the ability to just drop down to that edit toolbar. And the first thing I want to do is change the opening and hinge side of the door. And then I'm just going to grab my tools here and rotate the way that that's opening. We can get into our camera view and I can just slide down and rotate around and change the material of our door. So I'll grab that eyedropper and paste it. And it's saying that it's not able to determine the ob selected object. We're going to click yes and it will just update from there. 
I'm going to zoom in here a bit and we're going to change a few materials on the inside of our shower. The first thing I want to do is change my flooring. So we're going to open up that library browser again and get into some of these materials. For the floor, I have found this Luna that I wanted to apply. So I'll just click within that shower to apply that Luna material. Next, I'm going to grab a dusk tile and apply it to the walls within the shower. I also wanted to point out, though, that we still have room mode selected. So if I was to paint with this mode on, it's going to paint the entire room. I'm going to go back to component mode. I can just paste this on that wall there and then paste it on my other wall. And now we have that desk tile applied. I also want to show another new feature that has been added with Chief Architect X9, and that is our wall niche tool. We can go back over here to our plan view to select it, and we'll go up to our window options, and I'm going to grab this new wall niche. And I'll just click it within my plan to place that niche. I'm going to hold down Control, tap E on my keyboard, and this will open up that dialog. Right now the width of the niche is set at 32 but I'm going to change the height here to 18 inches. I'm also going to change the floor to top reference and that'll be set at 69 inches. That'll automatically update the floor to bottom and I'll set the depth here to 3.5. We'll click OK and let's see how this has been adjusted. And now our niche is set at a dimension that would work better for our shower. I want to change the material within the niche so I can quickly zoom in here. Now I'm going to add that Luna material to that niche. And next I want to add a wall covering to the space. So I'm going to click in my plan view. We'll go up to our standard toolbar. And I'm going to grab that break and place it here within my plan. And this will just segment out these two walls. So I'll hold down the space bar, click control on the keyboard to select these shower walls, and then we're going to click control E, and this will open up our wall specification dialog. And here's where I'm going to drop down to wall covering, and I can add a new covering. And I'm going to get into my user catalog, and down into bath, materials, and our wall covering is also going to be that Luna. So we'll click OK. We need to specify here the floor to bottom dimension. So I'm going to change this to 51 and I'll click tab and that's going to adjust. So let's click OK and see how that's been added within the shower. So let's accessorize our shower out a bit by using our library and we can double click on our camera view. This will give us a better picture of what's going on in our shower. We can just zoom in here and then I can also pan around just a bit. The next thing I want to do is add in my shower head. So I'll grab the shower head and click on the wall to place it. We can also just pull this down if we need to. It looks like it's a little high for the shower. And if we want to get a better view, we can go to our floor plan and I can take an elevation view. So we'll go up to our orthographic tools and take a wall elevation of that. And everything looks good there. I'm just going to drop it down just a bit and that looks good. So I'll close out of my elevation and we can click back on our camera view. From here, we can also add a few other items. So I'm just going to scroll down here, grab our handle for our shower. And we also want to pull up and zoom out just a bit. I'm going to add in our rain shower ceiling head. So we need to click here and place it within our plan. And we'll probably jump back to our floor plan just to make sure that's where it needs to be. And it looks like it's not as centered as I'd want it to be, so I'm going to pull that into place. While I'm in this view, I'm also going to add my strip drain. So I'll just click here and place that. And this is another view where I can bring in and add my shower bottles. So I do have some shower bottles that I've grouped together using our architectural blocks. So I can place those in the plan and click on them to select. I'll hold control and we'll pull those into place. Let's take our camera view once more and we can continue on. So let's rotate around our plan. I'm going to bring up that 360 image one last time and we'll just zoom around here. We can see that we need to work on our bump out now. 
So this is where we're going to add in our bathtub and we have some windows that we also want to place. So we'll jump back into the plan. To add in our bathtub, we're actually going to use a cabinet tool and what we're going to use is a custom countertop. So I'm going to click on that tool and I'll click here within my plan to apply it. I can tap on my space bar, double click to open it up. And we do need to set the thickness here on this countertop. So I know it's a, an interesting tool to use for the space, but I want to show you how within Chief Architect we can use many different tools to achieve what we're looking to create. So the thickness of this countertop is going to change to 21 inches. I'm going to click OK and we'll see that modify. And you can also see that we need to change some of the other dimensions. So let's exit out of this library browser again. I'm going to pull down my floor plan and I'm going to move this back into place. We'll also pull it out and we can size it kind of as a guide just using our plan view. And I can drop this down into space using our camera view over here. So that's going to bump all the way down into place. So I do want to dimension out this space as we're going to place a bench that's going to work over into our shower. So we can do this a couple different ways. I'll zoom in here and I'm going to grab a dimension. So we'll just click for a point to point dimension. And the first thing, actually the first thing I'm going to do is bring this countertop over and break it. So I have a break tool that's available on my edit toolbar. I'll click to break this out pull it out into place and then we'll dimension. So now we'll grab that point to point dimension and I'm just going to click and drag it and zoom in here. And we can see that this is only set at 13 inches. So I'm going to modify this. I'm going to select and I'm going to click to add 15 inches and that will get that adjusted. We'll open up that library browser again and we're going to change the material to be consistent to we'll add in that Luna and I'll just click and now that's been adjusted. So we can also quickly with adding in our bathtub to this area by just quickly grabbing it from our catalog here. Okay and then I can select it, hold control and I can pull this exactly into place. Next thing we need to do is go to those cabinet tools and we're going to place a hole and this is the hole in a countertop tool that we're using. And you can see now if we grab our camera view and pull down, our bathtub now has that exposed. Now we just need to add a faucet. So we'll get back into our library and grab that faucet and we're going to place it over the tub and we'll center it within the bathtub. And that looks good. Okay, so now we need to add some lighting into our space here. So into that bump out, we want to add a window so we can have some light that would pass through. So I can grab my window tools and I'm just going to click to add a standard window here. It's very easy to modify this. So we can open it up. We can change the width here. So we can always set the dimension or we can add to it. For example, I can just add four inches to this window and hit tab and it's just going to automatically adjust. We can also get to our window type and change the type of window we're using. So I'm going to modify this to a left sliding window. I also want to jump down and add some lights to the window and that looks good. So let's go down to treatments. We're going to add in some window treatments from our library. So we'll get into my core catalog. We'll go into interiors accessories and window treatments. And I need to expand this view so we can get a better view of what we have to choose from. So I'm going to select a pulled curtain. We'll click OK. And let's see the adjustment there. So that's been modified. I also want to expand out my window just a bit larger and change the material. So we were in our dialog, we can change it from there or we can quickly grab the window and pull it into place if we knew that or if we can see that our space needs to have a larger object or window in this case. I'm going to grab that window, it's currently selected and I'm going to center it 
within that bathroom area. I'm going to change the material of my window treatment. One thing I haven't pointed out quite yet is we can also search for a particular item. So I'm going to search for a cream color and we could choose in our library. So I'll just grab this current cream and I'm going to paste it. So we can quickly just apply it, the material and paste it over the window and that looks good to me. So let's move on and kind of complete this area. I'm going to grab my walls and we're going to pull out another interior wall into place and I'm also using my temporary dimensions for this space as well and we can zoom over here and see exactly what's going on so we'll just pan around on that wall. What I'm going to do is just copy the window that I've placed here so I'll copy it and I'm going to paste I'm going to open up my Windows specification dialog here and I'll set the width to 30 inches and then I'll just move this down into place. When I'm looking at this wall I can see that it's a little bare so I do want to accessorize this bump out a bit so we'll go up to our cabinet options and this time I'm going to grab my backsplash tool so I need to be in a camera view this is why I wanted to show that first and then go up to my camera tools and now I have that option available to me. So I can just click and drag out a backsplash and this is what I'm using for my artwork so it'll automatically place what would be a backsplash so we need to actually select it and we can change the layer so the material layer here is set at a half an inch and I'm going to modify this to an inch click OK and we'll click OK and see the adjustment there so I'll get back into my catalog and I'm going to grab a material that I want to apply and all I have to do is paste it and now that will update. So let's zoom back out of here so we can get a better view of this space and I'm going to add in my shag carpet so I'll just click to select it and then I'm going to place it and I also need to bring it into place just a bit so what we'll do is select it and I can pull it into place and I can hold control and that's going to give me a little bit more control there. I also have some lanterns I want to apply so I'll grab those lanterns and click here in my plan to apply them and we can rotate those into place. We'll use our plan view over here and I'll hold control and bring those out into place. Next we need to have a way to get into our water closet so I need to place a doorway here and I'll show you why I'm going to do that in just a minute. So I'll put the doorway in there and I'm going to click to open it up. We're going to change the width here to 48. Click OK. And I also want to make sure that my doorway is centered. So I'll go down to my center object tool, click to center that door. And then I'll grab my panel door and I'm going to place it in my 3D view. And now I have a way to enter into that water closet. So the last thing I'm going to do is add in my toilet and I can click here and place it and I just need to rotate it around my plan and we'll pull that into place. So we'll continue along the wall and I'll just rotate around and zoom over and we're going to add our Aspen art so I'll just click and click within my plan and I've kept my plan view open because I know I need to rotate this artwork around and we'll pull this back into place. Okay so from here I want to click back on that elevation and we're going to zoom in here and we'll grab a sconce and I'm just going to click in my plan to place it and it's very easy to just select it. We're going to copy, reflect it on the other side of the vanity. And let's get into this elevation so we have a better view here. And I'm going to do the same over on the other side. So I'll just paste that sconce and I'm going to select it, copy it, and reflect it about my vanity. And now we have some more lighting that's been placed. 
So we can go back to our floor plan. I'll drag that down here as well as our camera view. And we're going to add in a few more lights and then I'm going to show you some rendering techniques within the program. So let's get back into our plan view here. We're going to work on our lighting. So we do have different electrical tools within the program. We can access these by going up to our standard toolbar. And I'm just going to grab a light within the program. I'll click here to place a light. And then I'm also going to go and select it, use my multiple copy tools, do four additional copies. And we're going to do two rows of these lights. We'll click OK. And I'm going to hold my mouse down. And this will allow me to pull these lights into place here and then pull out that additional row of lights there. And we can pull those into place a little further. We'll click OK to add in those lights. And I'm going to delete the center light and I'm going to place a chandelier. So I'll go back into my catalog and pull in this chandelier and everything looks good. And I want to show you how we can also grab lights if I placed a little too many and just delete them. So I'm deleting these lights out and I can even select this light and pull it into place. So I'll just grab the light and adjust it. We also have tools within the program where we can connect the lights. So the next thing we want to do is add some switches to our plan. So I'll set a switch here at my door. And then I'm going to also set a switch over here. And then we'll connect them. So we have connect electrical tool here. And it's showing the amount that my electrical layer is not on. So we want to make sure that we turn that on. And we can just click and drag to select all of the lights within our plan. And I'm grabbing those lights and then I can connect the switch. I can also connect to the switch here and this will automatically place a three-way switch within our plan. We can even click on the connections and we can move them if you want to clean up your plan a bit. And that makes it look just a little cleaner. So I can also go up, we do have different display options. So if we wanted to clean this up, we can type electrical. And I can also turn off the display and clean up our plan again if we didn't want to have that showing in our plan. Okay, so I want to double click here and I'm going to rotate around. And it looks like our reflections got turned off. So we'll just go back up to 3D camera view options and we're going to toggle on those reflections and we're going to exit out of our library browser and I want to show you some rendering techniques within the program. So we'll go up to our rendering options. We'll have our child tool options that will appear. Here is our first option within the rendering techniques and this is our vector view. Our glass house view is excellent for bathroom and kitchen where you have a lot of cabinets. We have a dual tone option as well as a technical illustration. You can even do a painting and a watercolor. One of my favorite options is to do a watercolor and add a line drawing on top or a more artistic option. So those are some of our techniques. We can go back up to standard. And I wanted to point out that you can also ray trace within the program. And this will help to crispen up an image. It shows a lot within lighting and different reflections and materials. So those are options to do within the plan as well. So we'll cancel out of here. One other thing I wanted to highlight before we wrap up is we have other tools for getting a materials list. If we go up to our toolbar and down a materials list, we can calculate a materials list. When you get your materials list for a room, you can also add in specific manufacturer content. For example, if you're working with any cabinet lines, you can specify pricing. We even have the option to add in different columns if you need, and then you can export a materials list as a text file, a CSV file, an XML, or an HTML file. We'll hit cancel, and I'll cancel out. We're not going to save this today. Before we wrap up, I want to show you how you can create a layout within Chief Architect. So we'll go to File, 
and down to New Layout, and this will open up a layout sheet. If you drop down to zero, here's where you can modify the logo, you can set the project, you can see exactly what page you're on, so you have a lot of control within your layout sheets. We'll click on our elevation, and I'm going to dimension out our elevation, so we'll set our NKBA dimensions, and we can send this view directly to our layout. So we'll go to File, and down to Send to Layout, and here's where you can specify the page number. You have a lot of control. You can set the scale here. We'll click OK, and we can see this is going to drop this directly into our layout. And then you have control to move this into place exactly where you want it to be. I can also send my camera view to layout. So I'll just go and click on that view that I want to send. Go to File, down to Send to Layout. This will bring up my Send to Layout dialog again, where you can specify the page number. We also have different camera view options, so there's a live view selected. If I made any updates here, it would also update within my layout sheet as well. We'll click OK, and we can see that that's been placed on our layout. Here's a sample of a layout sheet that we've created. Here's the first page, and then you can toggle over to another page. So that's going to conclude our bathroom demonstration today. Chief Architect, Premier, or Interiors can be purchased in full, or we also have rental options available of each program. I suggest taking a look more in depth on our website, or feel free to always call our sales department. Have a great day, and I hope to see you back at another webinar.